Now, taking together the min, Q1, the median, Q3, and the maximum are known as the five number summary. And what we could do with the five number summary is create a box plot, which is a really cool graphical representation of our summary statistics. Now, what we do is we make a box around Q1 and Q3 with the median somewhere in between there. Then in AP statistics, we use what's called a modified box plot. So first we identify outliers using our fence method. We put asterisks at those outliers. Then the whiskers of the box plot go to the next highest or lowest values that were not outliers. Here we see an example of a box plot. And the most important thing is that each section of that box plot represents 25% of our data. Now note that I have an outlier there on the far right and that that whisker went to the next value in my data that was not deemed an outlier. Now the five number summary breaks the data down into 25% chunks. A wider whisker on the far right does not mean more data, it just means that that section of the data is more spread out. So each chunk below Q1, in between Q1 and the median, in between the median and Q3, and from Q3 all the way to that outlier, represents 25% of data. Wider simply means more spread out. It doesn't mean more data. Now, the cool thing is through a box plot, you can also see the shape. You clearly see the shape of this data is skewed to the right because 50% of the data is towards the bottom, kind of clustered together. And then the upper 50% of data is way more spread out. So if you visualize that as a skewed right graph. Here we see two more box plots that are symmetric. This is going back to those pink and orange graphs that were both symmetric in different ways. And now you can actually see that in these box plots. The first one is spread out with some outliers on the left and outliers on the right. But we see our whiskers are about the same size. That means they have about equal spread on the left and right. Now the median's not right smack dab in the middle of the box and that's okay, but it's still pretty evenly balanced which represents symmetry. Then the bottom graph, we see that the data is way more spread out. Look at that middle 50% in the box is way more spread out. That's because to grab the majority of the data, the box has to go way to the left and way to the right. Because again, look at the histogram. The majority of data is way to the left and way to the right. So the middle 50% is going to be way wider to capture that data. Now that we've learned all the different summary statistics for a quantitative variable, we can see how they all kind of fit together and really tell us a lot about the data. And one thing that the AP statistics example loves to do is give you a set of summary statistics and have you complete some tasks with it. So here we're going to take a look at another set of 174 trees where the heights of each tree was measured. Now across the top, we see the summary statistics, the mean, the median, min, Q1, Q3, the max, the standard deviation. And the first thing I notice is that the mean is lower than the median, so the data has a shape that is skewed left. Also, the median is closer to the third quartile than it is the first quartile. Now, what that means is that because there is more distance between the first quartile and the median, it does not mean there's more data. It just means that section of data is more spread out. We also notice that the third quartile is closer to the max than the first quartile is closer to the mean, meaning that the distance between the first quartile and the min is extremely far, which again is showing that that side of the data, the left side of the data, is more spread out. All signs point to the bottom 50% of the data being more spread out than the top 50%, which makes our data skew to the left. Another very common question has you analyze the standard deviation. The standard deviation tells us the majority of trees in this sample are within 28.96 feet of the mean of 104.82 feet. Remember, the standard deviation tells you how far typical data is from the mean. And within means plus or minus. So if we take our mean and we add 28.96, we subtract 28.96, that tells us where the majority of our data falls. Now that standard deviation is kind of large to be quite honest, which is again another sign that our data is fairly spread out. Now they also love asking you to talk about outliers. So remember we have two different outlier formulas. In red, I have the fence method. Here we're taking the uh, third quartile of 125. We're adding 1.5 times the IQR, which is Q3 minus Q1, and we get 185. Now the first thing I notice is that the max is only 135 which means that there is obviously no values bigger than 185, so there's no upper outliers. Now, the lower fence is Q1, 85, minus 1.5 times the RQR, and we get 25 here. Now, the min is 22, which is below 25, so we for sure know that we have at least one outlier, the 22-foot tree. But the idea here is, without knowing every single individual data point, 
There could be more outliers. Like, for example, there could be a tree that's 23 or a tree that's 24 feet. That would, again, be below 25. But we don't know all those values. We only know the min. So that's why it's important to make sure we emphasize that there's only at least one outlier. There could be more, but without the data, we don't know. We could also use our mean and standard deviation formula by taking the mean, adding two, and subtracting two standard deviations. Here we get an interval where we know a large, large, large majority of our data falls, and any values outside of this would be deemed outliers. Now, the top of that interval is 162.74 feet. And again, with our max of 135, there's clearly no outliers on that top end. But here we have a 46.9, the low end, which would tell us that any tree, including that min of 22, would definitely be considered an outlier. Now, here we see a box plot that I actually created for this data. Now, if you're asked to make a modified box plot, you do need to show the outliers. So I actually had all this data, and there was one other tree at 23 feet. So that's why you see two dots there, 22 and 23. And then that whisker goes to the next value. It looks to be about 30. That was not an outlier. Now, again, we see where the Q1, the median, Q3, and that max value fall. Now, sometimes in the AP exam, if you don't actually have all the data, you only have your five number summary, they'll tell you to just make a regular box plot not showing any outliers because you could certainly do that with the five number summary alone. All right, that's it for this example. Hopefully that made a lot of sense. Now, another really important task that very often comes up on the AP stats exam, whether it be a multiple choice or an FRQ, is comparing two different distributions. Maybe we have two histograms, two box plots, um, or even two stem and leaf plots, which we could call a back-to-back -back stem and leaf plot. But through any of these things, we want to make sure we compare. And when we compare, please make sure that we use comparative language like greater than, less than, um, bigger, smaller, higher, lower, all those different things, or, or even, hey, they're just flat out the same. Now, when you're comparing, we want to compare the centers. We want to compare the shapes. We want to compare the spreads. We want to compare the presence or absence of outliers. Let's take a look at an example. Here we see what we call parallel box plots. There are two box plots that are parallel and on the same x-axis. Now, oftentimes what we're going to be asked to do is compare. So the top is trees from the west side of the forest and the Bottom box plus trees from the east side. So what could we say about the shapes? Well, we'd say they're both approximately skewed to the right. We see that the bottom 50% on both graphs is well less spread out than the upper 50% on both graphs. So they're both a little bit skewed to the right. We also identify that neither graph has any outliers. And then we also could look at the medians. The median for the east trees is 20 feet, where the median for the west trees is 33. So it clearly has a higher center. We could also look at the middle 50%. The IQR for the top west trees is way more spread out than the IQR or the middle 50% for the east trees. So when we're looking at these different graphs, we want to talk about shape. Maybe it's the same, in this case, skewed right. Center, the median is higher for one than the other, and spread as well. Being able to compare two distributions really is vital. It comes up almost every single year on the FRQ section of the AP exam. So make sure you take your time with it use comparative language, and speak in context. Don't just say, oh, the one has a center of 33 and the other has a center of 20. 33 what? Fish? Inches? Centimeters? Seconds? No, trees from the east are a little bit taller than trees from the west. One has a center of around 33 feet, one has a center of around 20 feet. Use things like that to make sure you speak in context, especially when you're comparing two distributions.